Welcome to the caravan place. Today we're looking at caravanning tips. So we've uh, thought of four or five different little tips that may help you, but also things that as a dealer we see quite a lot. So uh, hopefully this, this may help you. So tip number one, leaving the keys in the door. Now you may think that you come to open the door and be okay and just I'll just leave the keys in the door. The problem with that is if the wind grabs hold of the door and pulls the door back, nine times out of ten, we're going to end up with little dents as here. This is something that we see 50% of vans have got the little dents. There's not an awful lot that we can do with that. If we end up with dents like that, it's either ending up putting a, a badge over there, a sticker or something like that, or after to have it filled and painted. Uh, which again is, is for two little dents uh, it's, it's quite extreme and can end up sometimes looking worse um, so just always remember when you open the door take the keys out and then you're not going to end up with any little dents as we've got here tip number two window scratches so I uh, don't know whether you can see just here we've got quite a small but quite a deep little scratch uh, and all that we're going to use is uh, a tea cup um, any any tea cup that you can pick up from uh, Halfords um, any of the car places like that um, there is other buffing compounds that are on the market um, so any any sort of abrasive um, compound uh, tea cut's brilliant because it's not too abrasive um, so it's not going to cut it too too much but if you do use a, a more abrasive compound to cut deeper scratches uh, real deep ones you might have to use a, a machine polisher um, so you, you'd use a more abrasive compound possibly then come back then to tea cut and then come back to polish so uh, the little scratch that we've got just here we're going to try it by hand um, we've got a a similar compound to, to tea cut that we're going to put put on got a fair bit on there probably too much to be fair and we're just going to rub rub it in and just work around the around the scratch and again it's uh it's an idea once you've done sort of the the scratch itself to actually do all the whole window so that you don't end up with just a, a nice polished clean corner of the window um, but you end up then with a, a completely and again it's, it's a good idea to give the van a good wash off first um, just so that you've not got any grit or dirt that you're then going to be scratching and putting more scratches into the into the window um, and then once we're happy with the result and we've got the, uh, the scratch out and it's, you can't see it anymore just a little bit of polish then go back again over the complete side of the window and as you can see hopefully we've got a fairly deep scratch that I, I even thought that we might have been after to get the machine polisher onto just with spending a little bit of time It's now gone. And again it's uh, quick, quick and easy, doesn't take very long and that'll just keep your windows uh, looking really nice. Normally the near side of the van if you've gone down any hedge or quarter branch or anything like that uh, and that'll also work on the bodywork. Um, so we're going to flip round to the other side where we've got couple of marks on the bodywork itself and I'll show you how to get those out as well. So we're now onto the bodywork. We've got a couple of small scuffs, um, probably from again a, a tree, uh, a branch it has gone past something. Um, the only issue that you have when you start getting into doing the bodywork is you'll probably end up having to do the whole panel. Uh, but it does mean that any marks like this it's just going to bring it up like now. Um, and it will end up making the whole complete side of the caravan um, 
stay shinier and, and a lot easier to clean as well so again uh, we're using a compound it's not teacup but very very similar to teacup more or less the same properties as teacup uh, and we're going to just work on this area here uh, and again we'll go back over with a bit of a polish and you'll see the difference in a second and pretty much just within two seconds of wiping it wiping it over I feel like one of those uh, car polish salesmen that you see on the uh, QVC or something like that I'm not trying to show you any polish I'm just trying to show you how to actually polish the, the marks out of your van um, but it is literally a wipe over I'm just going to save me after to do a complete body work at the moment which we will end up doing at some point but I don't know waste uh, your time on the video showing you a complete side of a, a van being polished but literally two seconds going over and those marks have, have now gone um, I damp I got the cloth slightly damp uh, before I started as well and then again just a quick going over and again the way that I've done that there I can now blend that into the, the other areas so that it if you, if you haven't got time to do the complete van, you just want to get some marks out. Again, just blending it through to the other areas. And then hopefully, if we'd have took a picture before and after, we'd see the difference. But, uh, again, nice little tip. Caravanning tip number three. Um, going to need a spirit level and a winding handle uh, and this is quite an important one actually getting the caravan nice and level you'll find you can buy small little spirit levels um, that you can actually stick onto the caravan either on the a-frame or um, around the caravan but wherever you're going to put one of the little small little little what do you call them? It's a leveling small little spirit Spirit leveling device gadget. Small little thing. <laughs> put your small little thing there. We'll put a link in. Okay. So you can buy a small little spirit level that will stick onto either the A frame of the caravan um, or somewhere on the caravan, and we'll put a little link to one uh, that you can buy off the internet in the description. Um, I quite like using a, a spirit level um, and there's a couple of reasons for this. If you put a little spirit level, uh, one of the small little ones like we've put in the description onto the A-frame, that's all great but if the A-frame is not level to what the caravan is then the A-frame might be level but caravan necessarily might not be. Um, so it doesn't hurt, you don't have to have one quite this big, uh, I've, I've got a big one here. Um, but you can you can get smaller ones um, and what I tend to do is either off one of the work surfaces or probably actually the best is straight onto the floor of the caravan um, so would you believe it that uh, we're actually quite quite close to being spot on um, already what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wind the jockey wheel up just to put it on level um, so that should have raised oh Jesus there you go that's just like gone a bit mad then it does that occasionally let me just centre it and then you can start again there you go so that should have raised the bubble out now so we're not we're not actually level um, forwards and backwards I don't know whether you can see the bubble is actually now up the front half so that's saying that we need to lower the front part of the caravan down and try and get that back into the centre so we're going to drop the uh, drop the A-frame down I need to go just a little bit more so again it's a little bit of trial and error uh, and again we're pretty much spot on back into the middle now so we're now front to back we're, we're level but what we also want to do is just make sure that we're level widthways 
Um, I'm just going to have a quick look, see whether that is. And we're slightly out. Um, so what we're going to do now is if if you're not quite level across. Um, so you can see now that we're out of level um, widthways. So uh, from side to side, so we need to now level up the sides of the caravan. Uh, and now to do that, we uh, we need to drop one of the back legs. Um, potentially, what we need to do is sort of so the on this instance, we need to bring the offside up and drop the near side we'll keep the near side as it is and raise the the offside so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put the rear near side leg down and raise the front offside leg up just to bring the offside of the caravan up slightly we've not got to go very far just to bring it up the other way that you can do this uh, is with levelling ramps uh, and you could put a, um, a levelling ramp if, if it was quite quite a severe um, out of level you could you could bring the one side up by putting the one wheel onto a levelling ramp but we're only really slightly out here so we can do this with the, with the legs um, so if we go back outside So what I need to do is I need to drop the back leg on the near side here and then I'm going to drop the front offside leg and put a little bit of pressure on that and just bring the caravan over slightly. Another great tip, if you don't want to be here for half an hour with a standard leg winder, is using a drill. Now, you can buy the attachments, and again, we'll put a link into the description um, of, of where you can buy these from. Uh, a normal drill, and this will then save you a fair bit of time with your legs down. Now, the only thing that we've got to watch here is that we don't, as we're putting some weight around on the caravan, that we don't actually put the caravan out of level front to back. Um, so uh, we, we will have to recap that. I'm now going to put the front near side or front offside leg down. I'm just going to raise that up slightly I don't want to break the drill, so I'm now put a little bit of weight here. And then what we'll do is we'll just have a look, see whether that fits. back up and brought that into level and if you come and have a look now we're still slightly slightly out we're still going to come up just very slightly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and raise or we'll drop the front leg put a bit more pressure on it and then if you can let me know when that is level All that I've done there is just put a little bit more weight on that front offside leg because that's the side that we want to raise. But what we just need to double check now is again the other way round and that we're still level this way. And we are, that's spot on. Now we know now we can put the other legs down and just put an even amount of pressure on, on the other two, the other rear leg and this other front leg. So again, just use the drill. So all that we're going to do now is just prop the other two legs, so the front and the inside. And again we're not really looking to lift the caravan or put any major weight on, and then the other back one.
So, we know that the caravan's absolute level. Um, one big important reason that we want the caravan as level as possible, I've gone quite spot on there sort of a thing. Uh, you d probably don't need to go as 100% as that. I'm doing that just, just to give you a, a good idea of how to, how to get the caravan level. Um, but one major reason that you want to get it 99% level, the fridge, if it's not level, you'll probably find that the fridge won't work. Uh, and that's going to be on gas or electric. So, you may have an aluminium runner at the bottom of the door. There's a good chance, if you do, that you're going to have chips out of the painter's roof here. And the reason that that is, is because normally the step will move, bump against the, the aluminium strip and take chips out of the paint. Um, one way to try and prevent that is a small piece of vinyl. And whether you've got one that's absolutely pristine and it's never been scratched or bumped, this is going to stop it. So if the step does hit against it in the future, uh, it's going to damage the, the vinyl and just take the vinyl back off, put a new little piece back on. You can get these in different thicknesses, so I'd go for the thickness or the, the biggest thickness that you can get. Um, you can get different colours, so you could put any sort of colour on here that you want. And it's going to either cover any little marks and, and scratches up, or like I say, if, if it's absolutely perfect and you've not got any, it's just going to make sure that it stays that way. Uh, and again it can add a little bit of a feature so different colours um, we've seen some people where they've put black ones on there the black looks quite quite nice and again it's literally just line it up you'd normally just measure it out and get it exactly at the bottom of the of the door start it on there and then just work work it on and again the thing is then you can if you get it wrong and get air bubbles in it, just pull it back, start again. And again it's normally fairly cheap, so you can you can swap it around, put different colours on. And again it's just going to protect protect it. And then if you do scratch it or you don't like the colour anymore or you're gonna sell the caravan and you don't want it on there now, it's just a case of pull it straight back off. If it's been on there for some, some time, uh, a little bit of WD and it'll take any sticky marks off of there, and a little bit of polish up and it'll be like brand new. So when you come then to sell the caravan, part exchange it, the, uh, the bottom strip's gonna be in perfect condition. Caravan tire pressures. This is one that catches a lot of people out and a lot of people don't know what the tire pressure should be. Um, sometimes it's not in the handbook, sometimes on a lot of the new caravans now they do put them on the stickers on the side of the caravans, but on, all the, on the older ones that's, that's not necessarily true. It might be that on an older caravan you find that it's actually got a different tyre size to what's in the manual. A so good website is tiresafe.org and we'll put in the descriptions of this little video the little link to, to, that, um, to that website. Now, what you'll need once you've gone to the website is GPLM, the tyre size, and also whether it's a twin axle or a single axle, whether you've got two or four wheels. Um, the app will look a little bit like this, or the website will look a bit like this. And what we can then do is, we've got a sticker here, and this is actually this is this one is actually telling us what the the tire pressure is or should be. So let's just double check it compared to the app. So we've got Caravan MT PLM, which is the on here MT PLM maximum technical permissible laden mass of 1900. Number of road wheels. This is a twin axle, so we've got four wheels, two axles. If it was a single axle with one wheel either side, we would have picked two wheels, one axle. And then tyre size and the load index. So on this one, we've got 185, 60, 15. 
and the load index is 88 now we have got a, uh, a video on our, on our channel of checking your tyres to make sure that they're in date um, and also in a minute we'll show you where this is on the tyre if if you've got this on the side of the caravan it's a good idea just to make sure that the actual tyres are corresponding to what's on here and again if it's an older caravan and you've not got this information um, and you can't find anything in the handbook or if you have found something in the handbook again just double check what tyres are actually fitted on the caravan um, so on this one we've got 15 inch wheel um, which is the R15 we've got 185 60 R15 and then the tyre load is the 88 so 185 60 15 88 click on that one find my tyre pressure and it's saying that each tyre should be 39 psi and that corresponds then with what the manufacturer has actually told us on the plate so tyre pressure 39 psi so a really really good app um, or a really really good website if you've not got this information um, again everything can be found on the on the tyre so again we've got 185 60 15 and then just at the side here the other one that's the 88 uh, that's telling us what the load index of the of the caravan is or of the tyre is uh, and that means basically the weight of what this tyre will take um, so again that's another thing that in your handbook if it's a slightly older caravan um, and you've just got information in the in the handbook um, you want to make sure that the load index here is actually relevant to what your caravan weighs uh, twin axles they're normally going to be around about this 88 um, 86, 87, 88 something like that maybe even 90 um, but on single axles a lot of them you're going to find a, a 102, 104 um, so again just, just make sure that the actual load rating is correct for your caravan um, the other thing that we can show you on this video that I've just noticed here is we've got some slight cracking on the on the tyres here so these tyres need replacing um, now same as another video that we've done previously these tyres are actually only five years old and if we just come to back here we've got the date uh, which is the third month of 2015 now they actually recommend that the tyres are changed um, or we recommend the tyres are changed between five and seven years um, now third month so that's March 2015 we're now in May 2020 so we're only just over five years and, and you can see the tyres here um, are already perishing and cracking so these definitely 100% if you see any cracking any marks like this on the side wall of your tyre that is going to mean that they're going to need changing um, and again we've seen tyres that have only been two years old and we've got cracking like that so don't always just go off the date have a real good look at the tyres make sure that uh, they're all okay and there's not any cracking